Hi, this is Kevin from Athsaurus, and this is question two of the step two paper from 2019. It's a really nice step question, this one, because it really tests the ideas uh, and the concepts. And if you get those, the algebra is relatively straightforward compared to some other step questions. But this whole question is about seeing your way through this argument. It teaches you something uh, at the beginning of the question, a result that you then have to uh, be able to use in the second part and the third part you have to adapt and use that again so quite a classic step sort of uh, progression in, in that sense and I hope you'll uh, enjoy doing it as much as I did don't forget there's the Mathsaurus website and the Amazon store uh, with loads of other useful uh, stuff including some step videos I've done uh, for other papers in the past okay so in the first part here it says the function f satisfies f of 0 is 0 and f prime of t is greater than 0 for all uh, t greater than 0. And we want to show by means of a sketch that when x is greater than 0 um, this is true right so the integral 0 to x f of t dt plus the integral 0 to f of x f inverse of y dy is equal to x times f of x. Okay so um, so let's have 0 uh, on, on the axis here so what do I need? I need a function that has f of 0 is 0 so it starts at 0 and it's got a positive gradient for uh, for all values uh, of t here, right? Okay, so you know I'm going to try and you know draw sort of a reasonably generic function, right? That has that property, right? So it's always increasing. Um, now, uh, so let's just put uh, a point x on here, and let's see what this first integral is. The integral between zero and x of uh, f of t dt. Okay, so that's uh, that's fairly easy, right? That's just this uh, area here. Um, and this one, okay, the integral between 0 and f of x, so uh, f of x is up here, uh, of f inverse of y dy. Okay, well, actually this is also a reasonably easy area to put on the graph then, right? I'm just doing a y integral. The, I'd, be, I'd be looking at the inverse function instead of the function if I'm looking at it this way around, right? So this area here would be the integral between 0 and uh, f of x of f inverse of y dy right and we get the uh, the rectangle has uh, area here x times uh, f of x right so we must have that x times f of x is this integral between 0 and x of f of t dt plus the integral between 0 and f of x of f inverse of y dy uh, and that's exactly what we wanted to show right um, so nice idea here but perhaps a suspiciously easy uh, question for a, for, for, for a step question right and when that happens in a step question that usually means that this is a hint and I'm pretty confident as soon as I see this that this is a method that they're kind of teaching us in the first part of the question that we're they're going to use in the later parts of the question so we're really going to look out for somewhere to apply that right so uh, part one the real function g is defined for all t by g t cubed plus g of t is equal to t and we want to show that g of 0 is 0 and g prime of t is greater than 0 okay i.e it satisfies the uh, the same conditions as, as what we were just looking at here right so so what about g of 0? Okay, so uh, g of, we'd have g of 0 cubed, right, plus g of 0, that would be equal to 0, just substituting in t equals 0 here. So g of 0 satisfies this cubic equation, right? So uh, I can factorize that as g of 0 times g of 0 squared plus 1. Uh, so that means that either g of 0 is 0 or g of 0 squared is equal to minus 1, but you know, this one would mean that g of 0 is not a real number, and we're told that g is a real function, so yes, g of 0 is equal to 0 as required, and also proving that g prime of t is positive for all t, so again, I'm just going to differentiate this whole um, expression implicitly, um, so uh, so let's just, let's just do that, right, so I get 3 times g of t squared multiplied by g prime of t by the implicit differentiation result plus g prime of t is equal to 1 
Um, so this means that g primed of t times 3 g of t squared plus 1 equals 1 and then g primed of t is 1 over 3 g of t squared plus 1 so I've got 1 over something that's definitely uh, definitely positive here for sure uh, so that's greater than 0. Fine, right now so we've shown that the conditions for this first result apply and we now want to evaluate this integral 0 to 2 uh, of g of t dt and this is really where we have to take that hint so even they were asked to work out this integral really uh, I'm going to think about working out the other integral and and do some rearrangement right so actually um, so the fact that these two things um, are true I could say okay so the result uh, holds and you know what we'd have here is I'm going to now put in um, we want 0 to 2 of g of t so I'm going to put in x equals 2 into this uh, in, into this statement right so it's the integral between 0 and 2 of uh, f of t dt um, sorry g of t uh, dt I'm going to apply it to this function here right plus the integral between 0 and f of 2 of g inverse of y dy that's going to be equal to 2 times f of 2 okay right sorry g of 2 uh, if I say f at all here I, I mean g okay so um, right so we need to do a couple of things here we need to work out g of 2 and we need to work out g this uh, inverse function right so okay so firstly uh, you know, so g of two also satisfies um, the uh, this defining equation for g. So g of two cubed plus g of two equals two. Right. So actually, um, g of two cubed plus g of two minus two equals zero. So this is a, a cubic equation again in g of two. And you can spot pretty quickly here that g of two equals one works. Right, so actually I can factorize this as g of 2 uh, minus 1 times g of 2 squared plus g of 2 plus 2. Okay, so, um, so you can factorize this however you like. Um, but you know, obviously minus 1 times 2 gives you the minus 2 and you just need to check what you need in the middle here. Right, and um, so if I look at this one, right, the discriminant of this quadratic is uh, 1 minus... 4 times 2 times 1 to so 1 minus 8 which is minus 7 is less than 0 okay so there's no real roots right so that means that actually it must be that g of 2 equals 1 for full marks in these questions it's important you check all these details right um, right so g of 2 equals 1 and uh, so I just also need to work out uh, g inverse here and this is probably the you know the the biggest conceptual uh, conceptually challenging step here is like how do I get the inverse function from from, from this description? Um, so remember when we work out inverse functions, we kind of swap the role of input and output, and then uh, uh, and and and, um, and sort of then change the subject. That's like a GCSE method for changing the changing the subject. And we kind of do the same thing here. Right? I'm just going to make all the g of t's t's and all of the t's g inverse of t right and that's 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 going to give me the inverse function by by that idea right so um so let's say that so also uh, we have that t cubed plus t equals g inverse of t right and again you need to give much justification for that um but uh but that gives us the inverse function right okay so that means we can work out this integral right the integral between zero and f of 2 of uh, g inverse of y dy again the labeling of the letter the letters here it's just a dummy variable so I could use t or y here really so that's the integral between 0 and 1 in fact I might uh, switch to t here <laughs> just to be confusing uh, t cubed plus t dt but remember you know t and y are just dummies in this in this integral so um so I just have to do this integral, right? So I get um, uh, t to the 4 over 4 plus t squared over 2 between 0 and 1. So I just get a quarter 
plus a half, if you like, minus zero, which is uh, three quarters. Right. So hence, um, you know by this thing we wrote down here, I'm going to have that the uh, integral between zero and two of g of t dt is um, what well, we said it was two times g of two minus this integral between zero and uh, f of two of g inverse of y dy, right? Which we now know is two times one minus three quarters. So that's just one and a quarter, or five over four. Okay, great. So um, part two, uh, the real function h is defined uh, by something very similar to g, but instead of t on the right here, we've got t plus two, and now we want to evaluate the integral between zero and eight of h of t dt. So, you know, it seems fairly clear that what we have to do here is to try to repeat the argument uh, from the first part. So let's go through and check first. Now, really must check all of the assumptions hold, right? And again, yeah, they've made it very clear that that's an important part of this method here, right? You know, that we can only apply this result because g of zero was zero and g prime of t was greater than zero, right? So we might have to adapt if that's not true, right? And in fact, if you start by trying to work out uh, h of zero here, right? Um, this time we get h of zero cubed plus h of zero equals zero plus two. Okay, so now h of uh, zero solves uh, solves this cubic. Okay, and in fact, it's the same cubic uh, that we solved uh, um, here for for g of two uh, in in this example, right? So actually, um, so actually, we can just go straight here and say that that means that h of zero is one. Maybe just put a note here that it's the same cubic. Uh, as in as in part one, um, you could you could put a star by it or something and label it as a star if you want to be super clear in your answers. Okay, so actually we haven't quite got the first condition right that we need, um, but we do have the second one right because if I differentiate right I get three h t squared h prime of t plus h prime of t equals one so I get you know exactly the same. Uh, result as I got before here, it's 1 over 3 times h of t squared plus 1, which is bigger than 0, um, again, for all t. So we just need to uh, adapt the result that we had uh, in uh, the previous part, right? So, so what we've got here is we've still got an increasing function, okay, but um, we have this time that it starts at one rather than zero, but otherwise this result is going to look pretty much the same, right? So if I put my uh, x somewhere here and my uh, and my f of x, right, I've still got this rectangle uh, argument that we can make. So this area here is going to be the integral between zero and x of uh, well, okay, let's let's call it h of t dt, right, and this one is going to be the integral, now this time between 1 and f of x of h inverse of y dy. So now, okay, we have that um, x times f of x is equal to the integral between 0 and x of h of t dt plus the integral between 1 and f of x of h inverse of y dy and I think now once we've worked that out we can really just proceed as before now but this time we want to take x equals 8 okay so uh, so really we're going to carry on um, uh, as before right so if we put uh, okay so h of 8 cubed uh, plus h of 8 is equal to h plus 2, which is 10, obviously, right? So h of 8 solves uh, this equation. And again, um, easy to see here that actually 2 works as a solution. 2 cubed plus 2 and minus 10 is 0. Um, but again, we should really make clear that there are no uh, other roots here. So 
Uh, we'll do this by factorizing, so this time we get an h of 8 squared minus 2 times 5 is um, gives you the plus 10, and if I put a plus 2 h of 8 in here, you can check that that makes uh, the rest of this work. Okay, and again, this one has the discriminant uh, is 4 minus 4 times 5, which is minus 16, is less than 0, so we get no real roots. So actually this time we get h of 8 equals 2 as the only possibility, um, and uh, h inverse here by the, um, the, the same method as before, I'm just going to get uh, t cubed plus t equals h inverse of t plus 2, so I'm just going to get this is uh, t cubed plus t uh, minus 2 by exactly the same method, right? So the relevant integral that we want for this one is the integral between 1 and h of 8 of h inverse of y dy. Um, so uh, so this is the integral between 1 and 2. Uh, again, let me write it in terms of t instead of y here, t cubed plus t minus 2 dt. So we've got a nice straightforward uh, integral to do here, t to the 4 over 4 plus t squared over 2 minus 2t uh, between 1 and 2. So that gives me 16 over 4 is 4 plus 2 minus 4. And then I get minus a quarter plus a half minus 2 here. So I end up with 2 plus 5 quarters, which is 13, uh, 13 over 4. And then we just conclude by appealing to that same result as before. So we've got the integral between 0 and 8 of uh, h of t uh, dt. That's going to be 8 times h of 8 minus the integral between 0 and h of 8 of h inverse of t dt, which is 8 times 2 minus the thing we've just worked out, which is 13 over 4. So I get 16, which is um, 64 over 4 minus 13 over 4. So my final answer here is 51 over 4, 12 and 3 quarters if you like. So a nice question there. Um, you know, it really appeals to a lot of the, uh, the things that we expect and like from step questions. You know, nice mathematical idea that's driving it. Um, some strong hints through the question. Uh, requiring a lot of like mathematical intuition and not so much in terms of like the really messy algebra which I think is one of the things that makes this a particularly nice uh, step question.